I just couldn't breathe. Uh, I said, and my wife said, what's to do with it? I said, I can't breathe, I'm, I've got pains in my chest. Not having enough air to, uh, to function normally. Yeah. In cases of adult asthma, if you forget that killer question, what do you do for a job? Then you are probably placing that patient at a significant disadvantage. With no fault of my own, I'd, I'd got this disease, and how bad is it? How fast is it going to progress? How much longer have I got to live? You have to be sat in front of a healthcare professional who actually appreciates that the workplace can harm you. I don't think my doctor did understand at, at all. So air quality is very important throughout our lives. As adults, we spend one third of our lives at work, so it's very important that also in adulthood we respire clean, healthy air in our working environments. Also to maintain the optimal lung function and to prevent respiratory occupational diseases from developing. It's a sizable problem. Uh, you, you have to realize that roughly 10-15% for instance of all asthma cases are work-related, uh, so caused by a factor in the work environment. And on top of that, there is a sizable group of people with asthma and allergies whose uh, asthma or allergy worsens because of uh, dust or irritant exposure in the work environment. There has been a lot of work done in relation to the quality of air at work. And for example, if you think back over 100 years ago, certainly in the United Kingdom, the quality in coal mines, for example, is a really nice example, or the cotton mills before that. But I think what we're facing now are separate issues. But if we focus on occupational asthma, of course the landscape is changing and also the kind of respiratory diseases is changing. So first you become sensitive to the agent you work with and, and for instance that can be flour for a bakery worker or enzymes the bakery worker works with nowadays. But after that sensitization period you really get quite strong responses. And when you have those strong responses it means that your, your lung function for instance drops quite substantially uh, and that makes it difficult to stay working in those environments after you have developed sensitization and when you are developing more serious symptoms. I'm from top to toe baker for 30 years and it's, it's very hard to, that I can't bake anymore. That's, that, that's not that easy for me. Johan is 53 years old and he is a baker. But after 30 years, 35 years, he started to get some allergic symptoms of the eyes uh, and of the nose, rhinitis, and also asthma. And he developed that in a, uh, very quickly, and the symptoms be became severe within a very short time. Yeah, it, was, it was not very easy to catch any air. So what the problem was, I didn't know, uh, but it was for, for, for a small time, and then it passed, and I went on, I went on because yeah, you have your own bakery and you don't think from, oh, maybe I have a problem, I have to stop with working. <laughs> Sometimes I get it, some, uh, there, there was no problem at all. And after a year, it became worse. And that went on until May last year. And then the first time I get it really, really bad. So it emphasized that not only for him, but for all the employees in the bakery, that we have to reduce the exposure to uh, baker allergens, because if the exposure is going on, you are still at risk and you may develop an occupational asthma, even when, you're, uh, even when you are for many, many years in, in your job or, or your profession. I don't work anymore. Now for six, seven months, I quit. I think mentally is, is, is the biggest problem. It, uh, it, it sounds nice, oh, you stop working, you go to do nice things, you play golf and then go... But you feel you are not any longer an apartment of the complete society. You, you have to take your part and that's, uh, yeah, and that's now over.
It is a tragedy to see people who have been harmed by a condition that is ultimately preventable. Because the symptoms are non-specific, for example in asthma, there is indeed a risk to misdiagnose or to miss the diagnosis of an occupational asthma. And then, of course, the worker will be further exposed to the occupational agents and his or her asthma will become more severe, uncontrolled. And then there's the risk that the treatment is always increased and further augmented. But of course, the most important uh, issue is to make a correct diagnosis early on. So early diagnosis in occupational disease, such as occupational asthma, are key. In clinical medicine, I've seen many workers who eventually are diagnosed as having occupational asthma who could have been diagnosed earlier if only somebody had asked them about their work. We did a large surveillance study in bakery workers where we really monitored uh, several thousand bakery workers in the Netherlands and, and when they had symptomatology uh, they got a full clinical workup. What we did see in that study for instance is, is that the majority of bakery workers with allergies, so those who are sensitized and have symptoms, uh, have not been recognized before by the general practitioner uh, <clears throat> and uh, are often wrongly diagnosed, so the wrong allergen has been identified or no allergen at all has been identified, meaning that these people remain in the workplace, remain being exposed, they do get treatment, uh, but it's actually uh, not very optimal that there is still ongoing exposure. There are a very substantial amount of personal costs and people may think of this as money or lack of financial reward from work, and that, of course, is, is part of it. But the personal costs go much deeper. We need to have an approach which is multifaceted, and in the first step, primary prevention is key. And therefore, if some occupational agents are proven to be very uh, dangerous to induce, for example, occupational asthma, we need to look for alternatives in the chemical processes or in the uh, factories or industries to prevent the development of occupational asthma in the, in the workers in those industries. With e-health type of approaches, we can actually uh, help uh, clinicians to, to follow guidelines more adequately, to, to give them the adequate knowledge uh, instantly. Uh, and I expect a lot of approaches like that actually, uh, because decision making, clinical decision making on, on what tests have to be done and how they have to be done, uh, that is really crucial for the clinician. I think there are some workplaces and some sectors that still have a long way to go to improve air quality to the point where it does not pose a risk to, to human health. We deregulate it um, and I think we, we start seeing more and more the problems with deregulation. We need some coordination at the national level but also at the European level. So doing nothing is no option actually. ERS has an important role to play in the topic of occupational respiratory health, in raising awareness at the European level, in funding research to investigate the underlying mechanisms of occupational asthma and other uh, respiratory diseases, and also to educate the uh, healthcare professionals on occupational diseases uh, in order to be able to make an early diagnosis and a proper treatment. Mm -hmm.